and one of whom had recently come back to the church. But what made this group of men unique was that each one of them had been a Protestant minister. Two of these men went on to host their own television programs on EWTN, and one of these men has been doing so ever since. His program has helped many other men, and women too, to do what he had done, leave their Protestant pastorates to become Catholic. Of course, you know who I am talking about, EWTN host Marcus Grodi. He is here with us today to celebrate the 20th anniversary of his program, Journey Home. And guess what? We're going to have a party and you're invited. So let's get started. We are women of grace from the throne of the Lord. celebrate a very special moment, the anniversary of one of EWTN's longest running programs, The Journey Home, with host Marcus Grodi. I first met Marcus back in 1996 when I invited him at the prompting of Father Edmund Sylvia to be a guest on our television program, The Abundant Life. He graciously accepted my offer, along with Scott Hahn, Ken Howell, and Jeff Cavins, whom I had interviewed previously. What characterized Marcus then characterizes him now. His sincerity and authenticity, his love of the Lord, and his love of the church Jesus founded. A few years have passed since then, but zeal for the things of God is one thing that doesn't dissipate no matter the number of years. And that's because it is a fruit of the Holy Spirit who is always vivifying us and bringing us to the fullness of life in Christ. Let's welcome Marcus Grodi. Marcus, oh my goodness. I can't believe that this mile <laughs> marker great, has happened, huh? What a great privilege. And it is amazing to look back over the last 20 years of all that our Lord has been so generous and providing in our lives as well as allowing us to have this great privilege of being channels of his grace to other people. I mean, uh, I'm not worthy. I, uh, maybe you are. Oh, but uh, Certainly not. But what a great privilege it's been and a great joy. I know. Do you have any idea? I mean, here, this is a question I don't even think you can answer because there's been so many. But do you have any sense of how many people you've had on your show, how many individuals have shared their testimonies of how they've either come back to the faith or how they've come into the faith, especially well, Protestant ministers? Okay, so this coming September will be the 20th, start of the 20th season. So that's 19 years. Let's say 40 some guests every year. Okay. That's a mess of guests. Wow, yeah, that's 40 times 20. So we're talking Just about a, 800 people. Yeah, so we're around there. Gracious and sakes. some of those uh, programs were half hour programs, the ones that, that we did overseas. So it pushes, uh, and, and I'm constantly amazed. I'm not sure the audience knows this, but when I sit down with my guest, I've not heard their story yet. Uh, I've made sure that EWTN and my staff have vetted them and make sure there's <laughs> no too many surprising red flags that come up. but. I've decided to do it that way. I, I think maybe the Lord has uh, encouraged me to do it that way because I'm as excited to hear their story. It, it's, you know, the, we're talking about when we're interviewing somebody. Right, right. And we, what I want to hear and see is how I can identify the fingerprints of the Holy Spirit in their life. Yeah. What is it, given that amazing background that they bring to their journey. Mm -hmm. What was it that opened their heart to mm -hmm. the church? Well, first of all, what opened their heart even to Jesus Christ? Because I've always seen that the journey home is really a continuing journey of following Jesus Christ. And the mystery of God's plan for some people, he doesn't open their heart to the church. I don't know why that works, but he opens their heart to Jesus Christ. And then we hear in the story how that then changed their lives and brought them to a deeper relationship, especially with the Eucharist. So. Oh, yeah, you know, and, and I know that your program remains one of the viewer's favorites, you know, and, and they share all the time how they'll hear something that was said on your program that sparks something in them and begins this dynamic of faith. But I want to, I, I, I've got a surprise for you. And here's the little <laughs> surprise. We have a clip from that first program of The Abundant Life 20 years ago. I gotta tell you, friends, it's, it's kind of a hoot, you know? You, <laughs> 
I wonder if we look any different. <laughs> you look very much the same. I look quite a bit different. But, but this is an exercise of humility. You know? <laughs> so, so the fact of the matter is we're going to watch this. And, and what I want to encourage you to do is just what Marcus says he does with his guests. He looks out, what, for the fingerprints of the Holy Spirit. So as we watch this, let's see if you can find those fingerprints of the Holy Spirit in what Marcus had to share with us. 20 years ago, this, this month, yes. July, 20 years ago, on the Abundant Life set right here at EWTN. Certainly, the Coming Home Network is a blessing to so many. We hear Jeff mention that it was you, Marcus, that he called for help, and you, Scott, that he called for help when he was making this transition. Tell us about the Coming Home Network, Marcus. What is its purpose, and how are you helping so many to make this transition? Well, it, it started four, four years ago in response to these needs. Uh, it wasn't developed to go out after and to grab and pull back. It responded to a phenomenon that has been, has been happening. And at that point, I was working at Franciscan University, and we started a newsletter to bring people together to share their ideas, uh, the struggles they're going through. Um, and then we had a retreat and other gatherings where people could come and share the parts, you know, their struggles with the journey. But over the last couple of years, the letters began piling up and the email and uh, other aspects. So now I'm full time with the, the network. You know, I, you, <laughs> we, we look at that and one of us has gone gray. I wonder why I'm not gray. I, I wonder how that happened. But the fact of the matter is it, it was wonderful. And, and I want to make all of you aware of the fact that we will have that particular program available for you at womenofgrace.com. And you can go out and watch the whole hour because you actually talk about your journey of coming into the faith. And, and, and that, that story bears repeating, Marcus, you know, because that was really in a certain way, you know, God did that because he knew all of these other things were also going to happen as a result of that. So, you know, how was it that you made this transition from being a Protestant pastor? Actually, you were an engineer first. Uh, yeah, it's a, uh, the Lord uh, has, it's been a long journey, and I'm very grateful. Um, I will say that in the, when I was about 21, I was brought up Lutheran. I knew the faith, but wasn't a practicing Christian. In fact, by the time I was in college, I was pretty much a scientific materialist and set the faith aside. And then in, in, when I was 21, by the witness of some friends and a wonderful pastor, uh, God zapped me with a two by four and, and I surrendered to Jesus Christ. And it was at that time that uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 became very important to me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He'll direct your paths. Mm -hmm. Here I am 40 years later, I still believe that verse and try and follow it. I trust it. You and I are sitting here, you know, and I'm trusting that God's going to guide us. And, um, and I became a pastor after being an engineer for a number of years, became a pastor. My goal was to help others discover this deep relationship with Jesus Christ. It's been my goal all my life. And in the process, the issue that opened my heart eventually to the church was the confusion in Protestantism. I wanted to be faithful from the pulpit every Sunday to make sure that what I was teaching was true. And so I believed in Jesus Christ. I believe that the scriptures were the sole foundation for our faith. And so I believed it was my responsibility as a pastor to deliver this truth to the people so they could make sure that they knew Jesus Christ and that they knew all that was necessary mm -hmm. to one day stand before God. The problem was that as a Presbyterian, I realized that my particular evangelical Presbyterian answer to salvation was different than the Baptist on that corner and the Methodist on that corner, the Assembly of God, the Catholic, the Episcopalian. And in time, the question was, how can I know that what I'm teaching is true? Because I know I'll be responsible to God for what we tell people. Yes. What you and I tell people on this, I know. we're responsible. So we have to make sure we're true. That's right. It's not about us. It's not about making money. It's not about power, prestige. It's about being a channel of God's grace. And it was that that actually led me to decide I shouldn't be in the pulpit. So I went to resign from the pulpit. I still love Jesus Christ. I still love scripture. But if I can't be certain that my angle on this is true and not just my opinion, then I have no right being in a pulpit. So I resigned. Started to go back to school. I, I have to stop you there. Yes. You know why? Because that was so brave. 
Well, I mean, that was a courageous move. You know, oftentimes we feel it, we're we're in a we're in a conflict internally, right? Because we we know what we should no. do, but it's so difficult to do it. And your livelihood depended upon that. You had a family. Well, that in, in many ways, I'll say that that's what led eventually to the Coming Home Network for the very reason you're talking about. Okay, so go ahead. But, well, in the sense that, yeah, you've got to if it's an issue of truth, right? Then. Do you keep going on? You uh, can't. How, how you can say, you well, I got I got to support my family. I've got to have money. This is my, but but it ain't true. Right. So, but even uh, Marilyn will tell the story that when people ask us about giving up our past to become Catholic, how can you make such a courageous decision? And her answer is, it's truth. It would take more effort to not do it yeah. because you want to follow Christ because now you're, re you're responding to the work of the Holy Spirit. So I went back to start going back to school. I was going to study medical ethics. I was a part of the Human Genome Project back in 1989 and 90. And it was during that time that I became reacquainted with Scott Hahn. You just saw him on the program. He and I had been in seminary together. We were then both very vehement Calvinists without any interest in the Catholic Church. I had heard he'd become Catholic. I thought it was a lie, um, or he'd, he'd flipped out. And that began a two-year study of discerning the Catholic Church. What is the pillar and bulwark of truth? It's the church. Well, which church? It's the one centered around Peter. So in the end, in, in the 92, my wife and I uh, entered the church. Then what am I going to do? Because all of my training was either in engineering or uh, in ministry. The Lord opened the door to Franciscan University. We started the Coming Home Network just as a fellowship on the side. Then in 96, decided to leave the university to do this full time. And it was about that time that Father Ed Sylvian gave me an invitation. Yeah, to come here, right? <laughs> That's right. Uh, to be with us on the program. You know, it, it's a remarkable way in which the Lord orders our steps, you know, and, and that's yeah. another beautiful, beautiful yeah. passage from Scripture. He orders our steps, and He takes us in, in ways, sometimes we're scratching our head trying to figure out, why am I doing this, you know? And, and in any ministry, you know, any apostolic work, we're, we're going to come straight up facing and confronting and carrying the cross, right? Because nothing good comes except by way of that. Yeah, that proverb, the last line is, you know, trust the Lord with all your heart. Uh, in all your ways, acknowledge him, not yourself, and he'll make your path straight. Right. Well, the straightness isn't straight. <laughs> it isn't that we can always say, oh, this makes sense, or yeah, okay, the next, the next thing I need to do is the trajectory of those 15 points. That's no. The straightness is holiness. Mm -hmm. It involves suffering. It involves changes of path. It involves sometimes just not knowing what to do, but Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Yeah. And surrendering in that way. You talk about that all the time with your women, yes. about the need to surrender to Jesus Christ, yeah. to surrender and be a vessel. And if you do that, you trust that he's drawing you in his direction. That's right. And that's the straightness. That's what you want. That's I want right. to be like him. That's right. And, and we're not perfect. So we stumble, we fall, right? All of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, it says in, in uh, Scripture. And, and, but what he does is he picks us, if we permit him, he picks us back up again and sets us on the road once more. So, you know, maybe you're listening right now, and, and maybe something that Marcus is saying is touching you deeply. Maybe you're feeling the prompting of the Holy Spirit, and you don't quite know how to respond, or if, in fact, it is the Holy Spirit. Maybe you're looking at your steps, and they seem a little squirrely right now, and you're wondering, you know, where is that straight path of the Lord? How do I tell if He's leading me or if it's all about myself? And maybe, maybe, just maybe, you are confronting that cross right now in the midst of whatever life endeavor you're engaged in. Well, God is about to work in you, and we want to hear from you. And if you have a question, Marcus is here. I mean, this is such a rare privilege. So he's here with us. Call 800-221-9460. Your 800 number is 800-221-9460. And if you're outside of North America, you can use this number. It's 205 271-2980, and the country code is 1. So let's do it again. It's 1-205-271-2980. You are with us, I know, via radio, via television, via all manner of social communications and media. We do invite you to give us a buzz. We're going to be right back. Stay with us.
Donette Benkovic here. Secure your spot at our Women of Grace retreat August 5th through 7th at Ave Maria University in Ave Maria, Florida, just outside of Naples. Our speakers include Father John Paul Mary Zeller, Friar of the Eternal Word of EWTN, and appointed by Pope Francis as a missionary of mercy for this Jubilee year. Thomas K. Sullivan, Susan Brinkman, and yours truly will also be presenters. This special Year of Mercy event is themed Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our refuge on the battlefield of life, and will be preceded by the Benedicta Leadership Enrichment Seminar on August 4th, running through mid-afternoon on the 5th. The theme for the Benedicta is Feminine Charisms of the 21st Century Woman. Special liturgies, exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, a healing service, and much more awaits you at this grace-filled event. Join us for a weekend full of grace and mercy. Call 800 55 or womenofgrace.com. This week on Register Radio, Jeanette DeMello looks at highlights from the Republican National Convention with Register Senior Editor Matthew Bunsen, who reported for the Register from Cleveland this week. Also, Jeanette and Register reporter Jonathan Liedel discuss how Republican and Democratic Party platforms square with Catholic teaching. I'm Tom Price. Please join Jeanette and me for Register Radio, Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, Sundays at 11 a.m. Eastern, only on EWTN. What is the evidence for the existence of God? How can faith and science coexist? How can something come from nothing? Cosmic questions that still elude the mind of man. Philosopher and theologian Father Robert Spitzer ignites an infinite discourse, a transcendent Q&A of sound reason, credible science, and faithful theology. At the intersection of faith and reason, we invite you to explore Father Spitzer's universe. Sunday, noon Eastern on EWTN Radio. Welcome back, friends. We're visiting with our very special guest today, Marcus Grodi, and we're celebrating 20 years of the Coming Home Network and the Journey Home on EWTN Television. Do want to let you know that Marcus has a new book out, and we're going to be discussing this book a little bit in our program. It is Life from Our Land, and it is a beautiful book. It's the search for a simpler life in a complex world. Don't we all need that? And Marcus gives us insights, inspiration, and really a path by which we can do exactly that. He's got a big testimony associated with this book, and it is a lovely, lovely one for us to reflect upon. And ask the Lord, what are you saying to me in that? This is available for you. This lovely book is available for you out there at EWTNRC.com. That's EWTNRC.com, as is this program and all of the programs that we will be doing with Marcus. We invite you to get out there and check it out. While you're out there twinkling those keys, I always invite you to stop by womenofgrace.com. I do, I do, because we've got excellent resources available for you there. And if you become a subscriber to Women of Grace exclusive, then all of those archives open up. And guess what? The program that we just saw the clip from all the way back there in 1996, it was program 14080. <laughs> is available for you there, you know, to watch 24-7, as are so many of the other programs from uh, the history of the Abundant Life and Women of Grace. So we invite you to become a subscriber. You know, we always have a patron saint, and we have a patron saint this week, too. And frankly, there are many connections between the patron saint for our program today and today's guest. Both of them left everything to follow the will of God in spite of the sacrifice and misunderstanding it would cause. Both of them, too, longed for a way of life that would bring them closer to God. And both of them realized that by surrendering to the new path to which God was calling them, interior joy and peace would be theirs. Affectionately known as God's troubadour, Francis was born to a wealthy textile merchant in 1182 and seemed destined to follow in his father's footsteps. But that all changed when at the age of 19 he was injured and taken prisoner during a military expedition. He spent a year in prison where he experienced a change of heart that made him want to forsake all material pleasure and fully embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not long after this, he experienced the famous mystical vision in a dilapidated church where the icon of Christ crucified said to him, Francis, Francis, go and repair my house, which, as you can see, is falling into ruins. Thus began his life of radical poverty, which eventually garnered him many followers, 
as well as papal approval. The treasure of blessed poverty is so very precious and divine that we are not worthy to possess it in our vile bodies, he taught. For poverty is that heavenly virtue by which all earthly and transitory things are trodden underfoot and by which every obstacle is removed from the soul so that it may freely enter into union with the eternal Lord God. It is also the virtue which makes the soul, while still here on earth, converse with the angels in heaven. What a beautiful, beautiful sentiment of heart for us to reflect upon. It is, in fact, only the simple of heart who can reap the true riches of life, he said, which is all that comes from the hand of God. His teachings continue to ring true to the faithful to this very day. And he says this, remember that when you leave this earth, you can take with you nothing that you have received, only what you have given. His feast day is October 4th, St. Francis of Assisi, please do pray for us. He's a marvelous saint. Oh, yeah. You know, wow. and so many that could have been selected. But there is that connection with Franciscan University. And in so many ways, you have really uh, quite a bit of the Franciscan spirituality in you because you made a big major move, you and Marilyn, some time ago. You left the city and headed out to the country. Right, right. And as so often happens, if you're willing by grace. I mean, we can never forget the fact that even our love for the Lord is a gift of grace. I mean, it really is. Yeah. And if we get the courage to follow him in a, a direction, especially if everybody around you says, don't do it. If you have that courage, that's from grace because yes. God is trying to draw you on that straight path yes. to him. Uh, we're not puppets. We have to freely respond. So there's that both and in that. And um, we we ended up leaving the city to go out to the country, not originally because it was our plan or desire, but because Marilyn had uh, received as a gift part of the old Century family farm. Um, and it was at a time when things were going crazy in our culture, not unlike they are now. So we saw that maybe moving to the country would be the best option for raising our sons. Mm -hmm. And it really was more about that. Where do we want to raise our sons? Mm -hmm. And where would we as a family uh, feel that we have the best option of living our life in faithfulness? Uh, if following Fran St. Francis, I don't know that we ever even for a second thought that we were worthy to consider that uh, model, but we moved to the country. We designed a house, we had it built, and maybe the original idea was we're gonna have a retreat in the woods. And the interesting thing that this was happening in the same year that we had our first program. So hmm. when we began that move to the country, I'm also leaving the university to do this lay apostolate and not sure whether that's gonna finance us. Uh, in fact, I remember even, even having a, a private meeting with Marilyn's grandfather, uh, beloved, uh, her, John Shaw, our grandfather John Shaw, who's passed. Uh, and I remember walking with him, he runs, runs the family orchard, ran the family orchard now, Marilyn's sister Holly does. And wondering, well, if the apostolate doesn't go through, uh, can I help with the orchard? Uh, just wondering what we would do. And, but we knew that this was the right move. We, we knew in our, again, by grace, this was right for us. We didn't know what was gonna lead us to in the future. And the last thing that ever crossed my mind was that it would be farming. <laughs> I have no farming background. I've never even had an interest in it. I were a terrible gardener. Uh, and in many ways, uh, like so many people, detached from the world. I mean, creation. So focused on technology, the world around us, never even looking up anymore at the stars, just focused on what's going on around me. Where are we gonna go? What's gonna happen in the future? Lord, where are you taking us here in this horizontal environment? Yeah. But yet not seeing the vestiges as St. Francis say, uh, loyal, uh, as St. Bonaventure, excuse me. Bonaventure. Called us to do in our journey to God is you, you look at creation and you see there the evidence of God. And it was with our going to the woods that we began to discover that which we never 
expected or we're looking for. Yeah, how beautiful. And you know, we live in this really hectic pace, right? This really crazy environment and we just get busier and busier and busier. And all the technology that was to free us up and give us more leisure time, uh, hopefully more time to pray, has actually put us into a type of bondage to it, right? Yes, yes. And we've become maniacs with regard to it. And I, I don't use that term lightly. We really have, we've be, become addicts. Uh, you know, to communications right. and, and to the press of the world because now we feel as though we can instantly communicate, so we ought to be instantly communicating all of the time. And, and what you're suggesting is really a radical move, a quite a radical move. And, uh, you know, friends, maybe you find this in your own life. We want to hear 800-221-9460 if you're in North America, 800-221-9460, 800-221-9460. If you're outside of North America, here's your number. It's country code 1. 205-271-2980. It's country code 1, 205-271-2980. And it does remind me of a great spiritual truth. And the great spiritual truth is that we're incarnated beings. And God has determined that we use our senses, right, yeah. uh, to, to find him. Uh, because we're incarnated beings as well, however, it's part of our church that on feast days and, and, and other liturgical solemnities and things of this nature, we celebrate them, Marcus. Mm -hmm. And um, it seems to me that we have something to celebrate too in these 20 years. So <laughs> we do want to celebrate and I promise you a little party. So we're going to have just a little bit of a little party now. We've got something that we want to present to you. I don't know how you're going to get this back to Ohio. <laughs> and maybe it won't even last that long, quite frankly. But let's just take a look and see what we've got for you. And so are you going to bring it over here, Mark? Here we go. I hear this familiar song. <laughs> Your theme music. So we've got a beautiful cake oh. for you. And this is Mark. He's going to be in camera here. He's our floor director today. Isn't that beautiful? And I'm wondering if we can get, can we get a nice shot of that? I think that we can. That's great. Happy anniversary, 20 years of Journey Home with Marcus Grodi. Wow, it's so wow. pretty. It's so beautiful. And friends, you know what? If there was a way to cram this right through that camera and into your mouth, I would do it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's very, very beautiful. And the flowers are there. They remind you a little bit of, of, of what it is that you're about. Well, you know, you and I both are very grateful to Mother Angelica for the invitation oh, she's yeah. given to us to do this. Yes. You know, God bless her soul. And uh, the whole, even the idea of being, I don't think she dreamed that it last 20 years. <laughs> I don't she think She never so. said that, but I never the know. Holy Spirit keeps bringing converts. Well, you know, he does. And, and, and the, the reality is that, you know, we look at Mother and she did precisely what you have done and what we all must do and that is to heed the voice the prompting of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit to move us to the next point where he wants us to be can you share with us a little bit about how we can hear that voice oh wow well one the book kind of discusses this issue if in any ways the book in some ways the whole book is about that and one of the ways God invites us to begin the journey is to looking at his evidence, look at his evidence in the world he created. Mm -hmm. David said that, I looked to the heavens, and Jesus said that, look at the birds. You know, in the, his parables, we're using the senses not to worship the world, not to crave the world or the grasp the world, but to see through the world, almost like we, in a sacrament, we see or, or a, a statue. We don't worship that statue, but that statue draws us to the saint, or draws us to Our Lady. Well, the world draws us to God, and it's, it helps us see that. We live in a world that's blind to that, yeah. but that's the beginning of our journey back. It's not the, the end all, but it's the beginning of looking at the vestiges, the fingerprints, if you will, of God showing his love to us in his creation. Well, so much to discuss, so much to say, so many of the other beautiful, beautiful aspects and realities of the way in which God works with us, presented by our guest today, Marcus Grodi. We certainly want to invite you to give us a call here. We invite you to share your stories with us, to share how the journey home has made a difference in your life. So when we come back, we're going to be taking your phone calls, and we invite you to make the call. Remember, EWTNRC.com. We'll be right back, inviting you to stay with us on this very special day.
Hello, friends. If there was a program that could help your daughter, granddaughter, niece, or student to come to realize the gift of her femininity and the beautiful reality of who she is in the eyes of God, would you be interested in having her participate? Would you be interested in helping her and other young women to participate in it? I hope the answer is yes, because that program is now available for young women. Women of Grace is delighted to launch our newest Women of Grace study program, Young Women of Grace, Embrace Your Femininity. This beautiful study for girls ages 12 12 through 17 teaches young women what it means to be a daughter of God, to discern their purpose and mission in the world, and to find true fulfillment without losing their souls. Young Women of Grace presents vital Catholic teaching in a colorful magazine-style workbook that is packed with fun facts, testimonials, and stories of the saints and other Catholic role models. Transform the life of that special young woman and order a copy today. Visit womenofgrace.com or call 800-558-5452. That's womenofgrace.com. 60 Seconds with Mother Angelica. We need to pray for the gift of knowledge, not just knowledge of our faults, but knowledge of God. Do you know God? Or is he just somebody that you go to when you're in trouble? In this gift of knowledge is a certain amount of detachment. Oh, we don't want to hear about that, do you? We, we're attached to everything, little things, silly things, chairs. Don't sit in my chair. Why? Because it just fits me. <laughs> it doesn't fit you. You're too fat. <laughs> well, if you ever said that to somebody, you're attached to what? A chair. Okay? You can be attached to God, and you can love everybody. You can love your children and love your parents and love even your enemies. But attachments take the soul out of your heart. The people you know and trust are on EWTN. Welcome back, friends. We're visiting with our guest, Marcus Grodi, and it is such a pleasure and privilege for me to have him here on Women of Grace because in July of 1996, 20 years ago, Marcus came to the network and was telling us about this beautiful apostolate that he was beginning called the Coming Home Network. He himself, having come into the faith, leaving behind a Protestant, a Protestant pastorate, and he was making a way to help others who felt the call of God to do the same, uh, to approach it uh, and maybe mitigate some of the fears and some of the questions uh, as a result of his own journey. And so we're celebrating that beautiful event because what grew out of that is the Journey Home, which you see right here on EWTN, one of the longest running programs. And we are so delighted that we have this opportunity to celebrate this great anniversary with Marcus here. We're inviting you to give us a call. I'm going to give you some numbers. Here you go. If you are in North America, it's 800-221-9460. It's 800- 800-221-9460. If you're outside of North America, your number, country code 1-205-271-2980. That is country code 1-205-271-2980. Now, for those of you that are listening via radio, these numbers are a little different. So if you're driving, please do not write them down. Just try to memorize them. But if you're at home, you might want to take them down. So I'll give them to you one more time. 800-221-9460. 9460 or country code 1 205 271 2980. So we have Ashley calling us from Colorado. Are you ready to get out there to the phone lines? I want to say something real quick. This sure, is, it's please funny do. because you've mentioned coming home network and the journey home, and sometimes people get confused about that. Yes. The very first journey home program, mother pulled me aside and said, Now, don't talk much about the coming home network. People will be confused. It's the journey home program. And I said, No problem. Of course, I'm nervous. The very first live program. You know. <laughs> so I get on there. Welcome. First time live television. I say, welcome to the coming home. I completely messed it up. So even to today, people get the coming home network and the journey home program a little bit confused. So why don't separate. you, yeah, they are separate. The apostolate that enables. The coming or, home network in go. which we work with non-Catholic Christians to help them discover the beauty of the church. Yeah. And if they decide to come home, then our, our goal is to help them find their way into the church. Yeah, absolutely. The journey home is the program is the program right here on EWTN and you interview all of these wonderful people who have made that decision yeah, yeah. and the stories are fascinating well er, now are we ready yeah, I'm ready. very good let's go to Ashley she's calling us from Colorado this morning good morning Ashley good morning Jeanette how are you honey I'm 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 well thank you and thank you both you and uh, Marcus for your wonderful programs and congratulations on the anniversary thank you Ashley. thank you Ashley thank you. 
My question is, I've been watching you both for years. Um, I mentioned to my husband that I was considering becoming a Catholic, um, but he has said that if I do, he will divorce me, mm. and that he that if I do, that would invalidate our marriage and our baptismal vows, which were taken in other church traditions. What am I to do? Oh, Ashley, this well. is a... This is, this is a very difficult question, and it's one that I know numbers of pastors have had yeah. to face just in the opposite direction with their wives, and it, yeah. it, it creates it, a, a very, very big decision to make and a conflict sometimes. If anything, what Ashley is talking about is one of the primary reasons that the Coming Home Network exists, because uh, especially a Protestant minister, usually man, but not always, of course, um, who's had a call that he discerned from God to be a pastor, also a call to be married, important vows he's taken in his life. And then in the process, if by grace, or he hears a, a Abundant Life Women of Grace program and, and his heart is open to the church, and all of a sudden there's this great conflict of, I'm a pastor with a call from God to be a pastor serving these people. I'm also married with a family, and now God is maybe calling me to become Catholic, in which probably won't be able to be a pastor. All that training that I had, that calling, what will I do with that? And then if the spouse says, you do that, and uh, our marriage is over, I'm sure a month doesn't go by when, when we don't hear from people on this very issue. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy answer. And because there are Catholics on the one hand that will say, well, it says in the Catechism, Lumen Gentium, once a person's come to know, they can't be saved if they don't return or come. It says it in Lumen Gentium 14, a Vatican document. So they've got to do it. doesn't matter what. Or it might be, but how will I support myself? Well, you just go forward, God, and trust God. He'll provide for you. Well, that's one answer. Uh, but the, the other answer, which in that great... Uh, continuum of answers, there's no black or white, is that sometimes God's timing is different than ours. And so that's why we always encourage the, the person on the journey, including you, Ashley, to make sure you have a local priest that you can talk to and pray with to help you discern what God is calling you to do now, a spiritual director who can help you discern God's timing. Right. It's not that you're rejecting the church or turning away from what you've discovered. The truth but you also recognize that this vow, the sacramental vow that you've taken in marriage is uh, you've become one. The yes. two have become one. And so it's not to be, as we say in our marriage, remember there's a line there, it's not to be taken. It's not flippantly isn't the word in the marriage sermon, but it's not to be taken lightly. lightly. That's the issue. When you become one, if you're following God's call to become married, uh, you become one. In fact, you're not the same. And so if you're hearing God, it's also a reminder that the call to salvation is not only an individualistic calling to follow Jesus Christ. There was a great saint, I wish I could remember which one, said that when the first thing you're going to be asked when you get to heaven is who'd you bring with you. Mm -hmm. And so the journey to Jesus Christ is not just me and Jesus. It's your spouse. It's your children. It's that... that it's that subsidiarity mm -hmm. that God calls us to. You begin with yourself, and then you, that, that message goes out. Well, if you're hearing about the call to become Catholic, your spouse needs to somehow hear. And it's, that's the most difficult person to reach. Yes. Family, you know that. Family yes, is the most always. difficult. So it's an issue of timing. Lord, when do you want? And we also recognize in Romans 8, it says when we become children, and we call God Abba, provided we, a bunch of things, suffer. Mm -hmm. And so part of the journey for many people is, oh, I'd love to become Catholic tomorrow, but I can't. Mm -hmm. There's important reasons why I need to wait. I need to offer that up. 
yeah. for the sake of my family yeah. and my marriage. And that's exactly what I was going to say, uh, Marcus. And you know, Ashley, when, when we bear a deep interior longing for God or a suffering of another sort, or even if it's not interior, it's exterior, the suffering in and of itself becomes beautiful prayer. Uh, and the way that we do that is to attach it to the sufferings of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, what did Jesus offer his Father? He offered his father his suffering. It was his sacrifice, right? So you can take all of this interior suffering that you're experiencing, offer it to Father God through the merits of the cross of his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for your husband, for him, for his eyes to be opened. Uh, you know, and, and I think that that can really move tremendous mountains because yeah. it is it is praying as Jesus prayed, right? Yeah. Uh, through the travail that is so deep. Uh, but this is, it's a heartbreaking situation and, and not one that's uh, uncommon. It's we very common. You mentioned St. Francis today. There are many saints, when we read their stories, felt God was calling them to do something, but because the local bishop or the local priest said, no, you don't go right. there. And, you know, but this is where I believe God's calling me to do. No. And so they have to let that go or to offer that up. Right. Maybe there's a timing, waiting. Right. Until the, because you're a part of the body. Yeah, that's right. And so even this discovering the Catholic Church, the beauty of it, that's a great gift of the Holy Spirit. But in the, the big picture of your marriage, you have to trust that to God. Yeah. And wait for the timing of that. Yes. Uh, and that's why you need more than yourself discerning what God's calling you to do. You right. need a spiritual director. Well, that's excellent advice, Ashley. So I, I would I would encourage you to follow through on everything that, that Marcus has said uh, so that we can begin to discern what that timing is truly all and, about. And have her connect with the Coming Home Network. Oh, there you go. Tell her. Yeah. <laughs> She's still chnetwork.org is our website. chnetwork.org. You hear me talking about clergy on the journey. We work with anyone on the journey of the church. We've got literally hundreds of of helpers uh, as well as staff members that would love to be communicating with you, praying for you and helping you discern the timing of God's call in your life. That's why we're there. Perfect. There you go, Ashley. You've got immediate help available to you there. Sure. Friends, we're going to go to a break. When we come back, Susan from Oklahoma is going to be with us and you can be with us too. Let me give you those numbers. If you are in North America, your number is 800-221-9460. That's 800-221-9460. If you're outside of North America, here you go. It begins with the country code 1205-271-2980. That's country code 1205-271-2980. We're going to be right back with our guest, Marcus Grodi. Stay with us. You are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church. The papacy is about more than the person in office, more than the outfit, hat, Pope mobile. It's about more than the beautiful buildings of the Vatican. And as awesome and as important as all that is, the papacy, at the end of the day, is about Jesus Christ, who left us with an organized religion because he preferred that to disorganized religion. It's about Jesus who founded a church before we had a book because he wanted his people to live, breathe, worship, and work as one body. It's hard to describe how amazing it is for Catholics to gather as they always have around the Rock of Peter to celebrate faith in Jesus Christ. This is Chris Stefanik. Complete coverage of World Youth Day 2016 from Krakow starts Tuesday, only on EWTN, the Global Catholic Network. In this election, we get to focus on the policy issues that are important to Catholics. The problem with this election is that you don't know what's going to happen next. If you want talking heads yelling and screaming, you're at the wrong network. At EWTN, we are covering issues in depth. Daily convention updates and commentary from a Catholic perspective on EWTN TV. EWTN. Live truth. Live Catholic.
Welcome back, friends. We're visiting with our guest, Marcus Grodi. I want to offer you his new book. It's available for you at EWTNRC.com. It is Life from Our Land, The Search for a Simpler Life in a Complex World. This is a book that's going to open your eyes to the beauty of nature and the way in which God speaks to us through it and why it is that we should avail ourselves of all of these marvelous ways in which God seeks us out because he's doing the seeking. So we invite you to get out to EWTN. RC.com, that is the website for Religious Catalog. If you prefer to call, the number's on the screen for you. You can do that, too. Don't care how you get it. Just encouraging you to get it. <laughs> Go on out there. All righty, we've got uh, lots of people giving us calls today. We want to give you the number, 800-221-9460. That's 800-221-9460 if you're in North America. Outside, it's country code 1, 205-271-9460. That's country code one two zero five two seven one twenty nine eighty. Susan from Oklahoma is with us. Hello, Susan. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for taking my call and for all the work you do with EWTN. Oh well, thank you, and thanks for your patience and waiting. Um, my husband and I met back in, and were married uh, during the Vatican II changes in the seventies. And I, at that time, was struggling with my Catholic faith, so we decided to study each other's faith and. First, we went to the Catholic Church where we had where we were living, and was openly humiliated by the priest, mm. um, which very very much upset me. So the next Sunday, we went to his church um, parish and were welcomed and invited to the pastor's home that night, and we just felt very um, p much part of the church immediately. So we joined his church, but after to, after time, I just felt unfulfilled and so after five years i prayed what to do and our blessed mother visited me three times in a dream and told me it was time to come home um on the third uh, visit um she told me to come that weekend and it turned out to be confirmation sunday and the bishop uh, asked the parish to stand up and renew their vows and it just felt so right and i've been a member of the catholic faith and church ever since my husband comes with me occasionally, like Easter, Christmas, and other special occasions, but that's it. He's never really joined the church. And I asked him a few weeks ago what was um, keeping him from coming, and would he come to RCIA and learn my faith like we had planned at the very beginning. Um, my knowledge of Catholicism is great, but the Bible is not great. I have a reading disability and can't learn from reading. I learn from teachings, uh, live classes, homilies. But he's very learned in the Bible. He went to Bible college, so I, I have a hard time um, coming up with answers for his questions. Mm -hmm. Well, Susan, let's see what Marcus has to say to you today. Yeah, the, she touches on a, an important issue, which I, I like to emphasize. I'm not sure all Catholics agree with what I'm going to say, but... In Vatican II, uh, the bishops of Vatican II made a very significant statement in uh, Lumen Gentium when it said that our, those that are born outside the church are not guilty for the schism. You know, a lot of our good, faithful brothers and sisters who love our Lord Jesus Christ, who love Scripture, um, were born outside the church and born into an environment of America that has a part of its heritage in anti-Catholic assumption. Yes. You don't always hear it, but it can rise up uh, at varieties of times. It's there. It's a part of our bloodline, if you will, that came from England and uh, the black myth about the Pope and Catholics worship Mary and we believe we earn our way to heaven. None of that's true. The only reason non-Catholic Christians don't worship Mary is because the Catholic Church says don't worship Mary. I mean, so <laughs> they just don't remember that. But, but the point is that our non-Catholic Christian brothers and sisters who love the Lord Jesus Christ do so because of grace. Otherwise, they wouldn't believe in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But they have barriers in their life that, short of a miracle, are difficult to get over. For some people, you can intellectually debate and, and break through the barriers that way. But for other people, uh, there are deep psychological uh, 
abhorrence of, of the Pope and the Catholic Church. It's hard to get over. It's been built up. Even in some fundamentalist Christians, the idea that if you're even showing any interest to the Catholic Church, that's the devil. Mm -hmm. And that's been inbred. In fact, I'll have guests on the journey home that will talk about that. One of my favorite old friends, who's a Bruce Sullivan, who's a, a guest, has been the guest in the journey home, he used to say that years after his conversion to church, he would be haunted by the idea that he's bringing his family to hell mm -hmm. because they brought him into the church. So my point is that we have to understand that about our friends and our family, that they heard the same thing we do, but they show no interest. What's going on there? That's why I always believe that behind every conversion is grace and prayer. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jesus says this one can't be brought out except through faith and prayer, you know, in that That's story. Right. And so praying, sacrificially praying for someone like uh, Monica praying for her son, Augustine. Yes. You know, that's how it can possibly be. But on the other hand, rejoice in their faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. Rejoice in their desire to read scripture. Encourage them to read the Bible. Encourage them to surrender to Jesus Christ, to follow Jesus Christ, because if God is calling them all the way home, we want them to be following Jesus Christ, because that's the journey toward the church. Yeah. Yeah. So you're telling uh, Susan to relax and to just to continue to pray, continue to sacrifice, continue to support her husband in his walk of faith. Yes. Yeah. Very strong. Well, there you go. That's very practical advice. And so, I, Susan? You know, there's no time like the present. I'm sure you've been doing a lot of those things. And if you have been, the idea is just keep going. We're going to go to Donna. She's calling us from Pennsylvania this morning. Good morning, Donna. How are you? Hi, Donette. Hello, Marcus. How are you both? Good. Very well. Good. I, I love both of you, and I love the work you're doing. You're both so evidently full of the Holy Spirit, and I'm grateful for it. Praise be to God for that one, honey. Yes, and my question is this, I guess mostly to Marcus, I, I am a Lutheran born into that faith and have recently considered becoming Catholic. Uh, I watch EWTN all the time and love it. However, I, I have one question that bothers me. Why is it considered a mortal sin when a person does not attend Mass every single Sunday? Well, um... It's because we recognize that we aren't individuals in our relationship with Christ, that we, through baptism, become members of the body of Christ. As it says in 2 Corinthians 7, uh, 5, 17, when we're in Christ, we're new crea creations. The old is gone, the new has come. And that newness is we're a part of a family. And the family knows what we need. It's not up to us to decide, eh, I don't know if I need church or not, because we're fighting a spiritual battle every day. The flesh, the world, and the devil that don't want us to be a part of the family. They don't want us to be close to Christ. It's the teacher that has told us what we need. Why is it a mortal sin? Because when we're apart from the body, we are apart from the graces that we need. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. And he, the body of Christ is where we encounter our Lord Jesus Christ. We receive the graces of the sacraments. He said in John 6, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life within you. So we take that very seriously. The church does. You need that. That's why. It's not merely, oh, I did this wrong. I, I, I shouldn't do it. It's, not, it's more about what's good for us, what we need to follow our Lord Jesus Christ. We need the sacraments, we need the fellowship, and so that's why the church says that four or five of these things are essential for our spiritual yeah. walk. Well, we have to leave it there, friends, uh, because we are right down to the last 30 seconds of the program. Oh. Marcus, what a grace to be with you. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here and celebrating your anniversary with us. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful work God has done in you and through you. Thank You're you. a treasure. Thank you very much. Thank you are you. too. And thank you for the work you do on Woman of Grace. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Friends, we do want to send you out to EWTNRC.com to get a copy of Marcus's book, Life from Our Land, The Search for Simpler Life in a Complex World. It's available for you there, as is this program and all the other programs we will be doing with Marcus. Until we're together again, God bless you. Bye-bye now.